it was a, an amazing experience. On top of just being pretty, on top of just being beautiful and fun, it was also really deeply changing. I, you know, I felt changed right away. Hi, this is Gail with Experiences You Should Have, your how-to guide for amazing experiences. And as we enter the new year, you might be planning your trips for 2019. Well, I've got a couple of dates you need to add to your calendar. That is right, in November 11th through the 13th, there are going to be some amazing festivals happening in Chiang Mai, Thailand, which is in northern Thailand and home to amazing food. And it's pretty cheap once you're there. And there's two festivals that happens there, the Loi Krathong and the Yi Peng Festival. And I apologize if I'm if my pronunciation is is bad there. Uh, However, I got to interview Stephanie Perry with Vicarious. Now, Stephanie Perry quit her job at age 41 to travel the world. And no, she was not independently wealthy. She saved up what the bare minimum that she could save to make this happen. And we talk a little bit more about that in in the interview. But she spent 12 months bathing elephants in Thailand. And she also volunteered for an organic cricket farm in Cambodia. And she's also worked as an au pair in Australia. But this amazing lady has traveled the world and she figures out ways to do it on the cheap. Isn't that fantastic? And she has created a site called Vacarious, and she helps others figure out how they can take a gap year. And a gap year is not just for the 18-year-olds or the 22-year-olds. You can take a gap year at any age and with almost any budget. Where there's a will, there's a way. And truly, you do not have to live your dreams and vacations simply by scrolling on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or whatever social media platform you're on. There is a way to travel the world on a budget. And soon I'm actually going to be taking my family to Thailand. And we're not spending crazy amounts of money to do this either. I actually found $700 round trip tickets out of Oregon all the way over to Singapore. And once you make it there, it's pretty cheap to get around and and make it to amazing countries where you can eat and live and experience so cheaply. So as you enter this new year, think about the amazing places that you want to go and possibly consider the Lantern Festivals in Chiang Mai, Thailand. And here's to you, Stephanie. Thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I love talking travel. I love talking the go out and do it. Yes. Yes. Me too. That's a... I'm very experience focused and I mean, hence the name of the podcast experiences mm-hmm. you should have. And yeah. I mean, that's what we're going to remember in life are, that's right. are the experiences and, that's right. and I'm never forget a trip or a travel or, but the thing is, you know, we, we travel to so many different places, but many times there's like that one experience or mm-hmm. those two experiences that really stand out. When you mm-hmm. think back to your trip, what were those experiences? And then that's what I'm wanting to share with the world so they could add it to their bucket list and then yeah. also learn how to do it. You do know? it. That's right. Do it. Yeah. yeah. Don't, just, don't just look at the screensaver on your computer for years and years. Do it. Get there. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Yes. Uh, you are one of those people who do it. I try. I wasn't always. 
I was, when I turned 40, I started thinking, oh, my life isn't what I thought it would be at this point. You know, I didn't have no, no kids, no husband, which I was pretty okay with. <laughs> <laughs> the no kids part was really upsetting to me. And then I said one day, well, here's what I'm going to do. Um, it, either I'm going to be miserable about this or I'm gonna turn it into an opportunity. I'm gonna live a life that maybe I wouldn't be able to live if I had the things that I thought I would have. You know, Maybe if I had a husband and a house full of kids, I wouldn't be able to just pick up and go whenever I wanted to. Right. Um, so I said, this is my chance. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm gonna turn this into turn this into an advantage and and live the life that I have instead of a um, crying about the life that I didn't have. Wow. What was the first thing that you did? The first thing I decided was that I was just going to see the world. I, that was, you know, so I put, I started getting my money together and I quit my job. And I said, I'm going to take 12 months and empty out my savings and see the world. I started looking at what places or what experiences I wanted to definitely have. Mm -hmm. And I picked out a couple of festivals and events around, mostly around the cheap places, mostly around Southeast Asia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm there. I get you. Mm -hmm. And I decided that I was going to go to these places. And then once the year was over and the money was gone, I would just come back and go right back to work. How much, I mean, if you don't mind me asking, how much did you have in cash? to to go travel like what was that target number you're trying to hit to be able to take some time off i decided somehow that twelve hundred dollars a month was enough for someone who was traveling inexpensively the way that i was yeah so i wanted fourteen thousand dollars and i got i hit that fourteen thousand dollar goal and no turning back <laughs> i love it i love it okay so where was the first place you went to in Southeast Asia? Thailand was my first country. Wow. I started in Southern Thailand. I start, well, I flew into Kuala Lumpur. No, that's not true. I flew into Malaysia. I flew into Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Uh -huh. Yeah. And stayed there for a couple of days and then went up into Southern Thailand. I started in Phuket mm -hmm. and then moved my way north and east. And then you landed in Chiang Mai. And then I landed in Chiang Mai. I planned to be specifically in Chiang Mai during the Yipeng Festival. I had seen pictures of people, everyone outside, dressed in white, floating lanterns up in the sky. Yeah. And I put that on my list. This was, that was on my list. This is one of the things I'm going to be there at that time, and I'm going to do that thing. I didn't know a whole lot about it but I was going to be there. So I got myself to Chiang Mai, the Lantern Festival. Well, there, there are actually two festivals that coincide. Mm -hmm. There's this, the, lan the floating, the Lantern Festival where you send the lanterns up in the sky. And then there's the floating Lantern Festival where you send things in the river. Mm. Two actual different events that happen on the same weekend. That's a busy weekend. It's a busy weekend. <laughs> Loi Loi Kratong. Loi Kratong is the floating lantern festival. Loi means float. Kratong is the lantern that you see that's made out of leaves with the candle in it. That's a kratong. Mm -hmm. So that's the floating lantern festival where you float your lantern down the river. You, you know, you light your candle and you send your troubles down the river. And then Yi Peng is the sky lantern festival where you sit, light the sky lantern and let that go now what does that symbolize is that letting your troubles into the sky or the, mm -hmm, the same it's supposedly a buddhist um celebration uh-huh uh-huh but it's uh, and it's, so it's celebrated throughout southeast asia at different times um, but in Thailand, it's celebrated during the same time. The two festivals are, are, have been joined together to both celebrate, to both recognize the um, 
celebrate the water, right? Celebrate the water gods. The Ping, I believe, is river, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. also to send your trouble, tr- send your troubles away, get rid of them, <laughs> and start I- the new start the new year. It happens during a new during a full moon. Wow. And do you know if it occurs around the same time every year? It does. The dates change, but it happens during the full moon in November every year. Got it. Got it. And so when did you arrive to Thailand? Did you arrive that weekend or to Chiang Mai or were you there for a while before you hit the festival? I was there for a while. I had been in Chiang Mai for over a month before the festival happened. I actually had to get my tourist visa um, renewed while I was in Chiang Mai because I stayed so long. (laughs) So yeah, I had been there for over a month. And so I got to see a lot of the preparation. The old town Chiang Mai is where, is the center of everything. It's you know, where everything's happening. They're all, that's where all the temples, all the wats are. And so I was in, got to see the hustle and bustle and everybody preparing and all the flowers like, just flowers everywhere and everyone decorate the temples were even more decorated the temples and the wats are always very beautiful but they were getting even more decorated so you can tell that you know something special is happening a special day is coming so that was a good experience i didn't just you know it's a lot of people because you know it's a bucket list trip a lot of people fly in and fly out you know just for the weekend but it was really cool to see how it all gets put together, how the parade route gets blocked off and how everyone starts to, you know, everything starts buzzing when it's time for the festival to come. Wow. That just sounds incredible. So how long does this festival last? It's over a three or four day period over the weekend, over the, well, when the weekend coincides with the new moon or with Mm -hmm. the full moon. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's like a three day festival. There was, um a parade which yeah on my year on different different years different things happen during different days but on the I was there in 2015 and the parade happened the first day I believe in that year uh, which was really fun it's an evening it's a nighttime parade so everything is lit up and you know lots of candles and lots of lanterns and a lot of light you know a lot of um light light of decorations um, and then the second night was the night that the lanterns went up in the sky. The um, release of the lanterns is very regulated now. This is the kind of event that I don't know how much longer it's going to continue mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because sky lanterns are uh, not, they can be um, bad for the environment, you know? Right. I've Some heard that them. they could start fires. and, and That's right. Yeah. That's right. They're a fire hazard. They're a hazard. They can be a hazard to airplanes or aircraft. Uh-huh. Uh, some of them are made with metal frames, which is dangerous. Uh, mm-hmm. Nowadays, a lot of them are made from bamboo frames, and people do bring them in with them, you know, order them before they even get to Thailand to make mm-hmm. sure that they have a bamboo frame. Um, so, yeah, so it's the kind of event that I don't know. It, I don't know how much longer the country will allow it to continue the way it is. It's the kind of thing that if you want to do it, it's time. Yeah. It's yeah. time to start planning <laughs> your trip. trip yeah. <laughs> and why would you suggest someone to, to really go and experience this festival? I went because it looks pretty, right? I went yeah. because, oh, it looks cool. The pictures are so cool. But you get there and it's a very um, spiritual and very, it's personal and community at the same time. You know, there are people who are, um, like I'm not Buddhist, right? And it's a, it started as a Buddhist event. It's more um, open now. Mm-hmm. But there are people all together in the same venue, in the same place, at the same temple, at the same time doing the same thing, you know, saying this, I'm putting an end to this particular chapter, whatever that thing is, I'm sending it away Mm -hmm. and I'm welcoming in the new thing. And that collective energy is very, um, it's amazing. I don't have a good word for it. I don't have a good word for it. I'm not like the, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a super deep person. You know, I, I just like to go 
do fun play things and go to fun places. But it was such an amazing experience to be there with strangers. You know, I didn't know, I knew one person in the whole crowd. Um, but to be there with strangers and to feel that um, sense of community with everybody. We're all here to do the same thing. Mm. And we all wish the best for each other and for ourselves. And um, yeah, it was a, an amazing experience on top of just being pretty on top of just being beautiful and fun, it was also really deeply changing. I, you know, I felt changed right away. So I hope that if, if someone has seen the festival and they make the, you know, make an effort to go, they realize that it'll be more than just some good pictures for Instagram. Right. It'll, it, it can, it will, it, it can affect you. If you open up to it, you can feel affected and changed and, and ready to open up a new chapter if that's what you're looking for in your life. I love it. I love it. A fresh start. Fresh start. And let your troubles fly away from you or float away from you, depending which festival is happening on that weekend. <laughs> mm-hmm. I did a double dose. I did, I, yeah. <laughs> I double did, yeah. Let them float and fly. Oh, just away. <laughs> you know, float and fly are my two favorite forms of transportation. Too. <laughs> that sounds incredible. Mm-hmm. And I want to talk a, a little logistics here. Yes. Um, so you can fly into Chiang Mai. There's an international airport there. And yes. I believe you've got to extend your visa if you stay past 30 days. Is that correct? That's correct. 30 days is the uh, normal tourist visa. That's what I got on the U.S. passport. But I did extend my visa easily. And and so getting around Chiang Mai, uh, are you taking like taxis or tuk-tuks or how does that work? There are a million different ways to get around Chiang Mai. They, uh, taxis are pretty inexpensive. Um, we're talking, I, it was, uh, I think, uh, 150 baht or five, about five U.S. dollars to get from the airport to the middle of town, which is around a 15-minute ride, depending on traffic. Very reasonable. Very reasonable. You may not, you know, the, because of the communication um, uh, barrier, taxis weren't my favorite mode of transportation. Tuk-tuks are everywhere. Uh-huh. Tuk tucks can uh, tuk tucks are cheaper than taxis. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a tuk tuk from the airport is about a hundred baht or about three dollars and change. Mm-hmm. And then there are song twos. I don't know, it's hard for me to pronounce. Yeah. They're just red pickup trucks, and the back of the truck is covered. The bed of the truck is covered, and there are benches in the back. Yeah. And those are like a public bus, like a tiny bus that, <laughs> that oh. you can take all around town. And those you can get from one, from one side of Chiang Mai to the other for less than, or for maybe a dollar, maybe 30, 40 baht will get you from one part of town to the other. And you just have to ask them if they're going in your direction or not. Is it like <laughs> a, a hand signal that you do that is specific to Thailand to hail a taxi? Not as far as I could see. No, you just wave. Okay. okay. <laughs> just flag them down. There, when I, I stayed in a part of town called Neiman, which is not far out of the old town, but there's a university there. It's a younger part of town. Uh-huh. And um, there were per- sp- specific corners where you knew the song too was going to stop. And so you just hang out at or near those corners and flag them down when you're ready to take a trip. And they got us into got us into the old town for, you know, like I said, about a dollar. Easy, they're a very easy way to get around. They get very, they can get very crowded at busy periods, uh-huh. but they're always coming. They're always running. And so when you pay them, so you're probably paying cash, not card. Right. Yeah. So were you exchanging your, your dollars for a bot at like ATMs or? Yes. Yes. I just pull it out of the ATM. Um, I never used a con- conversion place. Mm-hmm. I, can't, mm-hmm. right. <laughs> yeah. them, I can't even think of what they're called. Yeah, I never actually, I never converted money. I just pulled it out of the ATM, pulled, pulled bot out of the ATM. Yeah. Thailand has a mix. There, I mean, uh, Chiang Mai has a mix of some merchants will accept credit cards and some won't. 
Mm-hmm. Um, mostly it just depends on the size of the business and the age of the business. If it's just a, a corner restaurant or, you know, a food stall or something, they're not going to take cards, but you know, larger stores and hotels and restaurants will. And how far in advance should you book lodging to go to this festival and how should you book lodging? Um, is there a preferred website to book? That's a good question. Um, because this is a bucket list destination, because it's a bucket list event, a bucket right. list festival for people worldwide and ties, you know, lo- local people come from, you know, other towns to come to the festival as well. Um, I would say book two months in advance. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't want to cut it close. Uh-huh. There's plenty of, there's a lot of accommodation from any, you know, any level of, of hotel. There are four star resorts. There are plenty of um, hostels. I stayed in hostels and Airbnbs while I was there. So there is a lot of choice of accommodation, but I would, I would book it a good two months in advance if you want to make sure that you get um, a good place. Yeah. I, mm-hmm, I, and like I said, I booked through Airbnb and I booked, I booked through Hostel World. Um, and so I don't have any, I don't know any other Thailand specific place yeah. that you could look through, but those worked perfectly well for me. Perfect. I'm, I'm actually planning a trip there right now. Oh. Uh, we're going to be in Chiang Mai next month. Um, yeah. but, but I found like a lot of hotels were on Agoda, but I didn't see many hostels or homes or that sort of thing on Agoda. It was more hotels. That's right. That's right. I did, I did look, on, look around on Agoda. Um, no, but the hostel world is the place to go if you're looking for a hostel. And then homes, Airbnb, I found Thailand, Thailand homes, Southeast Asia in general, the homes on Airbnb seemed a little expensive mm-hmm. um, compared to what, compared to hotels in most, you know, in most cases compared to a hotel or a hostel, the Airbnbs were a little pricey. How much were you paying for lodging per night on just a guesstimate when you were there? I know, I know exactly how much. <laughs> I, I averaged $16 a night. Good job. I, yeah, because I was on a super tight budget. I was looking to spend less than $1,200 a month, you know, for the, for the entire duration of the trip. Yeah. So I spent about $16 a night. I um, started in a, in a, I stayed in a couple of hostels in Chiang Mai in the Neiman area. Like I said, mm-hmm. it's near a university and there's shopping malls. It's a more modern area. Um, so I, yeah, I stayed in a couple of hostels there and I think they were both 15 or $16 a night. And then um, once I got my tourist visa extended and I knew I could stay another month, I rented a room for four fifty. no, and well, it was actually an apartment <laughs> yeah. for $450 for the month. And I got, I did get that through Airbnb. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty fantastic. Yeah. And so what part of town should you stay in for the festival? Staying in the old town will put you in the middle of everything, but it's also going to put you in the middle of everything. You know, it's going right. to be loud and it's going to go on all night, you know, for the for, for the entire weekend. So if you, you know, if you don't want to be in the middle of things in the old town, the Neiman area was great. Like I said, it was very easy to get back and forth. Uh Um, And it's a more, like I said, it's a more modern area. So there were a lot of choices, Mm -hmm. but in Chiang Mai in general, there are plenty of choices in terms of um, types of accommodation that you want to stay in. Uh, But I would recommend either one of those areas. It depends on what you enjoy. If you want to stay up and party, you know, all night and yeah. stay in the old town and party all night. Now, what about vaccinations? Did you get any special vaccinations to go? No, I didn't. There's no, um, no, no suggested vaccinations according to the U.S. Uh, Centers for De- or CDC Centers for yeah. Disease Control. Even malaria, there's not even a recommended. Uh, they don't even recommend 
malaria, anti-malarials for the okay. area. Okay. So no, I didn't need to take anything special. Okay, good. Very good. We just got typhoid just in case, but okay. but I think it was optional. You know, mm-hmm. it wasn't like you have to have this. Yes. And, and as far as the culture there, is this a tipping culture there? Are your taxi drivers and people at the hotel or homes expecting a tip? No. Ties don't tip. Um, a lot of the foreigners will tip small, you know, tip their change if your, you know, tab comes to uh-huh. so many dollars and some change. A lot of foreigners will tip their change. But no, Thailand's not a tipping culture and, they, and people don't expect you to tip. Got it. Mm-hmm. And... So you've made it to Chiang Mai. You're going to go to these festivals Mm -hmm. and you have this incredible mind blowing weekend and let all of your troubles release. Well, what should you see next now that you're in Chiang Mai for another week or two or month? I think Chiang Mai is the kind of place where you can never get bored. There are, now I am a fan of temples. I know people will talk about having temple burnout. People who, especially people who've been to Southeast Asia, they're like, oh, another temple. But mm-hmm. I am crazy about temples. There's a temple right in the middle of Old Town called Wat Chetty, uh-huh. which has a, oh, I should know this. I want to say a 600 year old temple, but uh-huh. I'm not sure. Don't okay. quote me on it. <laughs> in the show notes, don't worry. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. And then they have a newer temple around it, a newer Wat, uh, or I guess it's the same Wat, but a newer building on the outside. It's just beautiful. And it's right in the middle of everything. It's easy to get to. And it's a good place to just walk around the grounds for, you know, a few minutes or an hour. I also like uh, Doi Sutep, which is a different temple that's up in the hills. You can see it a lot when you're just out and about in the town especially at night because it's lit up at night. It's just a big white light (laughs) at night, but you can travel up there. I took just a red, um, no, did I take a tuk-tuk? No, I think I took the red song the red truck up there. And uh, you can walk around and has an amazing view and it's a beautiful temple to go to. So I would say don't, don't miss the temples. Just go. Even if you've been to a thousand watts before, just go. Yeah. Yeah. Also, there are a lot of experiences to, to um, either hang out with elephants or bathe elephants or walk around with elephants. Thailand is not the most elephant friendly place. You know, there are some concerns with cruelty. So make sure that you research the place that you're going to. Elephant Nature Park has a great reputation. Mm-hmm. And Chai Lai Orchid is another place with a great reputation, a place where you can go. They're like elephant sanctuaries. They take in elephants who've been abused and um, you can hang out with them and make friends. <laughs> I bathed some elephants in a river and it was a really fun, a really fun time, really great way to spend a day. Wow. And then also you can't go to Thailand without hanging out at a night market. The night bazaar in the center of Old Town is great. You can get it all at one time. You can get your souvenirs. You can get your food. You can get your dessert. You can get more souvenirs. <laughs> it's, it's good shopping. It's good eating. There's a lot of activity. Somebody's going to definitely be playing music in a few different parts of the market. So def- hit the market. You can hit. You could go to the market every night if you're in Thailand for the weekend. You could enjoy it every night and have no, no problems. I can't wait. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to, it's amazing. It's a beautiful place and there's so much to look, so much to see and do and eat. <laughs> it's wonderful. Great. <laughs> okay, speaking of eating, what was your favorite thing that you had to eat in Northern Thailand? I'm such a big fan of soup. It sounds crazy, but no. Tom Yum, Tom Yum in, in Thailand is such a good soup. It's hot and sour. So it's like spicy and sour at the same time. Tom Yum guy is chicken, hot and, hot and sour soup with chicken. Tom Yum goon is shrimp, but it doesn't matter. And then there's pork, which I can't remember, Bo maybe. I didn't, but it doesn't matter. I just ate them all. So <laughs> that, yeah, I'm crazy about it. People, when I told people that I was going to Thailand, they were like, you don't even like Thai food because I don't care that much for Pad Thai. Uh-huh. 
because it's never it's never the same. You know, you eat it one day, it's great. You eat a different place, it's horrible. You know, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I had given up. Yeah, you know, so I'd given up on pad thai, but tom yum is yum. It's <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's amazing. It's just soup, but it's the best soup ever. Okay, okay, we're gonna go eat some soup. Yes, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, and then side note here, uh, you actually have your own company where you help others take like a gap year, essentially. Is, is that correct? I do. I do. I think that the grown up gap year is the best idea ever. <laughs> like I said, I took this gap year when I was, I started when I was, I left when I was 41. And it was amazing. And everybody said to me when I would tell them I was doing it, like everybody said, oh, I wish I had done that as if it was too late, you know, Mm -hmm. as if that's only something you do when you're 18 to 22, Mm -hmm. you know, but you don't do it as a grown up. And I'm here to tell you, you can do it as a grown up. I saw plenty of people doing it with spouse or partners, with children even. Yeah. 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 And so I just want the world to know (laughs) if you want to quit your job and travel the world for a specific period of time, I want you to. And so, (laughs) so I have, so my, my website is vacarious, V-A-Y-C-A-R-I-O-U-S, vacarious.com. And um, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. It's about getting you from the dream of traveling the world to a specific actionable plan. Like this is when I'm going to do it and this is how I'm going to do it. Exactly. That's specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. Yes. Smart goals. Yes. They get you there. I love smart goals. (laughs) I'm a geek about them. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I'm a nerd. Uh, But... (laughs) I love it. I love it. What's next on your, on your travel plan? Right now I'm in Mexico house sitting the cutest dog ever. I've been, I've been in Mexico. I've been in uh, Ajijic for, or uh, around Ajijic and Guadalajara and Guanajuato for five months. And I have a little less than a month to go. Um, So that's one of the ways that I'm able to travel and live. So, So like I said, I, quit my job. I traveled for a year and then I went back to work and I was like, "Mm, (laughs) (laughs) over it. So one of the things I do is I house it in exchange for a free place to stay all over the world. How do you find places to house it? I house it through trusted house sitters. There are a couple of different websites out there that um, connect people who need a house sitter with house sitters. Uh, There are house sits available for people, whether you want to take care of pets like I do. Most of my house sits have been with, you know, cats, dogs. But there are also house sits for people out there who don't want to take care of pets. People just who are traveling and don't want to leave their home open, don't want to leave their home empty. Yeah. Yeah. I think Trusted House Sitters is probably the largest site, the largest website out there. But there are a handful of others. Trusted House Sitters is a British company. Mm -hmm. So... There are a lot of the houses there are in England, in Canada, the U.S., and largely in Australia. Um, but there are a lot of sites out there that can get people started on the house sitting journey. And then once you get going, like I came here with one house sit through that site. I've been booked. That was um, four weeks yeah. long. And I've been booked solid since then by word of mouth. Wow. So, once you get going, you may, you know, it's even easier to just say, oh, I'm a house sitter. And, and people will invite you to come stay in their homes. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that, it's very creative. I mean, there's, where there's a will, there's a way. And That's right. It doesn't have to be five-star resorts and travel doesn't have to be this crazy expensive thing. Mm-hmm. That's right. I never knew that you could travel the world on such a small budget. You know, Mm -hmm. I spent, I don't even want to tell you how much 
how little money I've spent in Mexico because I haven't had to stay, I haven't had to pay for a place to stay. I've had a couple of months here where I didn't even spend three hundred dollars. So now, is that that's in, is including your food cost? That's food. Yeah, that's pretty much all I do here is eat. So, <laughs> so I love food. <laughs> so we're talking like less, a little less than ten dollars a day for for a couple of months. I've gone over sometimes, especially if I take buses back and forth to other places. I went to the beach for a while, you know. But if if it's just, you know, where all I have to do is pay for my groceries and my cerveza, (laughs) 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 then yeah, I've I've had a couple of months here where I didn't, I spent just under $300. This idea that this is so expensive, right? This Uh is only something that you can do if you have money already, but Mm -hmm. I don't have money (laughs) and I do it. Now, what about health insurance when you travel? Uh, Do you... Do you have health insurance or how do you figure that part out? I use a travel insurance company that that takes care of if I would need to be evacuated. So because I travel to such inexpensive places, I have, I just pay cash when I need health care. Uh-huh. So for example, in the Philippines, I got leishmaniasis, which is a, I don't know, a bacteria, skin bacteria that I got from insects. And I just paid out of pocket to be treated for it. I went to the doctor, got the um, oral antibiotics, some topical stuff, and my whole bill was about thirty-eight dollars oh, wow. from the emergency room. So I'm paying. So I'm paying out of pocket for these things. I know that that's really scary to a lot of people. Um, but if you're but, in inexpensive countries, then that's right. you're not going to see the medical bills you see here in the United States. That's right. My mom actually came to Mexico. My mom just left today. My <laughs> mom came to visit me the day after Thanksgiving, and she got new dentures down here. She said that in the U.S., they were, char- they were going to charge her $4,500 for the dentist, and she paid about $350 for them here in Mexico. Wow. So, Yeah. So the, so, um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. It's not the best solution, but I do, like I said, I do have the insurance so that if I do fall majorly ill and I do need to get evacuated, I'm covered for that. That is a major expense. That's something that people, you see people setting up GoFundMes, you know, to cover. Right. Right. So I do have that insurance, but everything else I'm covering out of pocket. Okay. All right. So listen there, podcast listeners, you can travel the world on the cheap and Stephanie with Vacarious can help you come up with a plan to actually make it happen. On yes. Budget. Yes. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Quit your job. <laughs> do it today. Quit your job today. Quit your job. <laughs> Go travel. <laughs> Do it. You know, uh, we're going to go travel Asia for a month. It's not a year, but, mm-hmm. uh, and we've got a four-year-old. And yeah. so we're going to try it out and see, see how it goes. You'll love it. I was shocked. I was really surprised to see how many families were doing this. I, because like I said, when I got started, I was doing it because I thought, you know, well, let's turn a negative into a positive. But it turns out it's not even a negative because even if that you have a family, you can still do it. It's it's an amazing experience. Your kid is only going to benefit. Like your kid is only going to learn amazing new things and pick up new languages that shock you. Like, how do you know how to say this? And, and embarrass you because you can't respond to them. <laughs> right, right. It's, it's only going to be great. Now, how do you find your flight deals? I am, so I follow um, theflightdeal.com and Secret Flying. So I look at those sites and when something pops up, I just jump on it. I'm a fan of Momondo. I research flight deals like it's my job. I <laughs> really so. yeah, Agreed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I research flight prices and I know approximately what something should cost. Uh-huh. And then once it, once a deal pops up on one of these sites, I just jump on it. Yeah. 
Well, fantastic. I mean, do you have any last tips for someone traveling to Southeast Asia or Thailand or yes. uh, for moi <laughs> traveling next month? Yes. Very important. Very important tip. The most important tip, eat all of the mango sticky rice you can. Ooh, I love mango I, sticky rice. <laughs> okay. So I talked about the soup, but I, I acted like I'm not a total mango sticky rice addict. It's hard to get when you leave Thailand, even when you go to a Thai restaurant. Uh, uh-huh. You know, yes. so I've been everywhere I go, everywhere else I go since Thailand, I've been like, do you have, and go to a Thai restaurant, do you have mango sticky rice? No, not today. No, mm-hmm. not today. So eat it all. Every, okay. Okay. <laughs> every meal, every eat dessert, eat, eat it after breakfast, after lunch, after dinner. Enjoy it. It's amazing. The rice, I don't know why why the rice is so delicious, but it's crazy delicious. The mango's good. The sweetened condensed milk or whatever it is that's on there. Mm. So eat it all. Eat it all and enjoy some for me. Think of me. I will. <laughs> I will. I'll take a picture. I'll send it to you. Please. <laughs> Please. Now I'm going to have to be on looking for flight deals back to Thailand. <laughs> well, come meet us out there. Oh, don't tap me, Gail. I'll, I have your dates. I know you're traveling. Yeah, come, <laughs> come out. Mm-hmm. Man, thank you so much for, for sharing your experience. And I did not even know this festival existed. I've lit the lanterns in the sky on New Year's here in the States, but I didn't know about this festival in Chiang Mai. Next time I need to let my troubles away, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll book my ticket there. Yeah, Great. you know where to go. Yeah. And listeners, make sure you check out Stephanie on Bakarious.com and she will make all your dreams come true. Absolutely. It was such a pleasure talking to you, Gail. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I uh, would love to have you on the show again and just keep up the amazing experiences. I have no doubt you will. No doubt. Thank you. And enjoy yourself. Man, enjoy that trip. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait. I can't wait. Truly, thank you so much for listening to Experiences You Should Have. Please, please, please subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. Um, Also, check us out on Instagram at Experiences Podcast and use the hashtag EYSH to share your experiences in the world that you think others should have. And if you have an amazing experience in the world that can be replicated, Hit us up at experiencesyoushouldhave.com and you should also check out the show notes. I write up some fantastic show notes for every episode providing relevant links, more information, and everything that you may want to know about the experience. So go to experiencesyoushouldhave.com and click on episodes and you can find out all the information there. Thank you again and look forward to an amazing 2019.